Hey BC, it's Glenn Kellaway from the basement. How are you guys doing today? It's Wednesday afternoon. We got a football game on a Wednesday, starting at 3.30. Ravens and uh, Steelers. I don't think the Ravens are going to do very well. They're all sick with COVID, but uh, they're making them play, so let's see what happens. It's fun to see a football game on a Wednesday afternoon. I can turn the sound down on the play-by-play, -play, put on some tunes. Ah... Uh, before I start, um, Lisa Tedesco and I started a video series on the bass guitar. We're calling it Bass to Bass. Two of us have been on a bass journey. I've been uh, working on my bass skills for about four years, and Lisa started uh, early this year. She's almost a year in. And uh, we're just, uh, first video was really just an introduction and just chatting about. Uh, how we uh, came to love the bass and you know our inspirations and all that and next we're gonna talk about bass players and our favorite albums kind of uh, you know albums that showcase uh, the bass uh, anyway it's on Lisa's channel we taped it this morning I'm not sure when she's gonna upload it but please watch for it and subscribe to Lisa Tedesco she's awesome my video today is on one of my favorite bands, Jethro Tull. I'm going to show my Jethro Tull collection. I'm going to rank most of the albums. And I want to kind of uh, talk about the reissue series that's been out the last, I don't know how many years now, maybe four or five years, uh, the book, the book style uh, series. I have all of them which number one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven i believe there's eleven in the series right now um the last one being stormwatch which came out earlier this year okay so when that series started i'm just going to talk about the series before i rank stephen wilson did the remixes outstanding job as usual um they are like uh, two, three CD sets, and then usually a DVD audio disc. Um, there's uh, the main album, uh, then the remastered main album, and then the outtakes, and uh, live stuff. It's great. It's really amazing, actually. This came out in 2013, um, so that's how long the series started, but they hadn't figured out the book style thing yet. The first one came out like this, and I know from reading discussions from Tall, tall fans that everybody's anxious for them to reissue this in this style, just so we can have a complete library of this amazing set. So anyway, I'll get to benefit later in the rankings. So I'm gonna go from First to last, I think, or last to first. Uh, I'm. I'll show you a few of the more, I guess, later issues of Jethro Tull albums that I'm not even going to rank. Um, under wraps, I like these albums, but uh, I'm just going to go with the, the twelve, uh, thirteen albums that were released reissued. So under wraps is is a good album. The Broadsword and the Beast, another good Tull album. I really like this album, Crest of a Knave. Came out in the 80s, it's got real 80s production on it. For some reason this reminds me of Dire Straits, I don't know why. It just kind of got that feel with the guitars or something, the way they they did it. Um, this is a live album, a little light music. It's actually a pretty good album. This is Ian Anderson's Jethro Tull, Thick as a Brick 2, kind of continuing story. It's uh, it's okay. It, he, he did a good job. It's all clearly not on the same level as the original Thick as a Brick, but it's a good listen. Here's a great comp if you like Jethro Tull and you just want 
a mix of their music. This is the best of acoustic Jethro Tull. It's got a lot of great songs on it. They tried to stick mostly with acoustic songs. It, with Jethro Tull was great doing acoustic music. Really good. Like, I mean, Ian Anderson played that acoustic guitar so well. This is a, a really, really good album. One of my most listened to Tull things in my collection, actually. Then uh, I got this too. Jethro Tull with string quartets. It's kind of cool. String quartets of uh, Jethro Tull songs. So um, it's not bad. Not a bad listen. Okay, so that gets all the uh, that stuff out of the way. Let's start with the reissues. First, these box style sets are incredible. Incredible, incredible. One of the best value of anything that ever came out. If you're into CD, you're, you're, if you're just a vinyl guy, obviously this doesn't mean anything to you. But if you're into CD at all and you like Tull, these are fantastic. Fantastic. Each one has, there's two CDs. And two DVDs on this one. They're all a little different. These are DVD audio discs, not video discs. So Passion Play is my least favorite of the 13 albums. Um, this one, so the new Re Stephen Milson, Wilson remix is on CD1. Then the Chateau de Horville Sessions which is a new stereo Wilson, Stephen Wilson stereo remix. And was like a completely separate album or something that they were working on at exactly the same time that I don't think ever got released or something. And the DVD audio, oh, actually the DVD one is audio and video. I uh, apologize. A Passion Play is remixed to DTS uh, 9624. There's a surround sound version um, the story of the hare who lost his spectacles, wasn't well, say lost his testicles, an intro and outro film footage used in the PP tour of 1973. And DVD 2 is definitely just audio. It's a remix of that uh, Chateau Sessions. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with this album. It's just my least favorite. Now let's talk a little bit about what you get with these things. Look at, this is a book. Every, it's the story of what was going on with the band at the time they recorded these albums. So if you put all these together, I mean, you've got yourself a thousand page frickin' book here to read. Um, it's all kinds of, uh, uh, interviews with band members and their thoughts and recollections um, story of what was going on with the band I mean it's they're incredible really really so well done I don't know if there's been a, a series done better than this actually I could go on and on but that's how many pages there are it's uh it's pretty cool so I'm gonna stop that's passion play Next, War Child. Again, oh, these are all good albums. I, I like them all. I'm just trying to rank them uh, as uh, I see how I appreciate them. Again, you can see the book in the middle. With the two CDs. Two DVDs. This one, same, same type of deal. Uh, CD1 is the new Stephen Wilson remix in stereo, and then CD2 and this one, second act, uh, a new Stephen Wilson stereo remix. So you get two remixes, and then there's the Warchild Orchestral Recordings. Um, DVD1 is audio and video, and DVD2 is uh, just audio DVD. Again, great hardcover. Again, just packed full of information. It's, it's basically, if you put all these together, you got a life story of the band. Next, 
Heavy horses. Heavy horses. So this one. Lots of great shots and great story. Um, this again, following in the same path, has the uh, stereo remix on CD one. Uh, there's a live concert from um, Burn in May 1978, mixed by Jacko Jaksik, who is, uh, if you don't know Jacko, he's a great prog rock guy, currently the lead singer and uh, second guitarist with uh, King Crimson. He does an incredible job. So there's a lot of live stuff on this, plus again, two DVD discs. Heavy Horses. Next, I'm going with the latest. This was the one that came out this year, Stormwatch. It's a good album, really good. Just not one I play all the time when I'm playing tall, so. Um, very cool cover with the uh, polar bear. Martin Barr. I saw Martin Barr band about three to four years ago in a small dinner theater club in Toronto called Hughes Room, which is really like a folk club. And I saw the Martin Barr band was playing there and I went to see them. They were fantastic. If you ever get a chance, if Martin tours again with his band and they come in your area, go see them. He is a great guitar player. He's got a great band. They do a lot of the tall stuff. It's really, really good. But again, the big story in here of the of the album and what was going on at the time with the band. Stormwatch. Songs from the Wood. Great album. The Country Set, they called this one. Again, it's not a hardcover. I mean, these are freaking solid, solid freaking things here. Uh, disc one, again, the Stephen Wilson remix. And associated recordings are on that. Um, Disc 2 is live concert, 1977. Mixed to stereo by Jack O'Jaxic again. CD3 live concert in 77. Part 2. It's a long concert. And uh, DVD 1 is uh, DVD audio. And DVD 2 is just is an audio video. Too Old to Rock and Roll, Too Young to Die. Another good one. Told just put out an amazing catalog of music. This is awesome. Again. Here we go. I'll just hold it up there just in case somebody wants to reference it themselves. You can put it on pause. This uh, re-recorded album for the TV special, Disc 1. I didn't know there was a TV special. Isn't that interesting? Uh, previously unreleased. That's disc one. And then five original LP tracks are on that. Again, uh, disc two, associated recordings from the sessions. And uh, the original flat transfer of the album. And then again, there's uh, two DVD audio video discs. Incredible sets. I keep saying that, but they are. Okay, next, the small one. The first one they released was a Stephen Wilson remix. Benefit. Great album. This one rocks hard, man. Martin Barr's playing on this is pretty cool. This is a pretty hard, almost a heavy metal album, in my opinion, for most of it. Um, CD1. Is the Stephen Wilson remix CD associated recordings are on CD2 and one DVD audio mix, which is a uh, surround sound of the Benefit album. Great, great album, Benefit. 
Now we're coming down to the last five. Classic. Thick as a brick. Amazing album. Genius. It's great. And these sound good too. They sound fantastic. This is the 40th anniversary set. Uh, CD features Thick as a Brick, original album remix, and then DVD uh, with uh, 5.1 and a stereo remix at 96-24 PCM. Uh, then a flat transfer of the mix as well. This is only a two CD or two disc set. Uh, CD, yeah, a CD side in the DVD audio 5.1. So this is the only one that's not a four disc set, I believe. And again, so much information. Great stuff. I love this album. The last four, I freaking love. I love Thick as a Brick, too. But these four, I'm really passionate about. They're just amazing albums, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Minstrel in the Gallery. Besides the title song, Mr. in Gallery, that kind of starts off acoustically and then gets a bit uh, into a, a, the electric side, there is a a whole acoustic section in this album that's absolutely beautiful. Um, it, uh, so Minstrel in the Galley, Cold Wind of Valhalla, beautiful song, Black Satin Dancer, Requiem, One White Duck, and Nothing at All. Uh, those uh, four or five songs there that are all joined together are just in acoustic masterpieces in, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so this... Uh, the new Stephen Wilson remix on CD1, plus some uh, alternate takes. Uh, CD2, live at the Palais de Sports, Paris, 1975. Again, mixed by Jacko Jaksic. And then DVD audio with the 5.1, and then audio video with uh, whatever else is on there. Two DVD discs, two CDs, lots of cool pictures, and lots of text. Number three, the first Jethro Tull album. This was a great blues album. So Jethro Tull hadn't developed their Jethro Tull sound yet. This, they had a different guitar player, Nick Abrams. And uh, he was a blues guy. I think he left and formed Bloodwind Pig or something. I, I think that's the band. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just going from memory. Um, this album, when it came out, there was one song that they were playing on underground radio that's off this album called Beggar's Farm. And that's the first song I ever heard by Jethro Tull. And I never bought the album, but I just loved that freaking song. And they were always on my radar. I held this album in my hand many times when I was young. And didn't pick it up, but uh, they didn't release these in order. Like this one just came out like a couple of years ago, when you know they put Benefit out first, which was like their third album, I think, um, just before Aqualung. So Jethro Tull, this was. It's got the remix. It's got additional recordings. It has uh, further additional recordings on CD two. Um, uh, previously unreleased mono mixes, original 68 UK stereo mix, and a digital uh, mono mix, and then a DVD. Get ourselves the two CDs. Again. Chock full of uh, stories and number two, stand up. Incredible album. They called this the elevated edition. 
original 1969 album remix to stereo and 5.1 surround by Stephen Wilson, plus a Stockholm concert from January 69, including two film songs and rare bonus studio tracks. You can't get better than that, folks. Yeah, this one is the stereo uh, is the stereo remix by Stephen Wilson. Uh, original stereo mixes are included as well. Uh, DVD audio is again 5.1 and some film footage. Uh, disc two is live at Stockholm. Um, yeah, incredible, incredible set. And number one, and one of my favorite albums of all time, in my top five of all time, Jethro Tull, Aqualung. This is actually the first album I ever bought by Jethro Tull was when Aqualung came out. Um, uh, like I said, I saw this was, and I was familiar with them. I didn't really pay attention when Benefit and Stand Up came out in the day. But when this album came out, I saw the cover in the record store and bought it it's based on the cover because I think it's one of the great covers of all time and brought it home and this album just you know some albums are just they're almost like custom made for you you just love them for, and this is this is the album for me I, I from the first moment I heard it it just did something for me Aqualung um, again stereo remix associated 1970 and 71 recordings and uh, DVD audio. There is uh, the two CDs, DVDs, great picture of the band, and of course, all the the story. This uh, vinyl copy is uh, actually. A German pressing from Chrysalis. It sounds pretty good, actually. Love that album cover. This this cover is very uh, very flimsy. It's got the kind of rough cover on it, but uh, just really really flimsy uh, thing. But uh, really good pressing. Um, I got it fairly cheap. And uh, that's my only, my Jethro Tull vinyl. Everything else is on these sets. Um, I do, I used to have, when it first came out, when Aqualon came out, the Stephen Wilson remix, and they had the album and the hardcover thing, and it came with the, I think it came with CDs and everything. I had it, and when I sold my vinyl, I unfortunately let it go. But anyway, Jethro Tull, great band. I hope you enjoyed seeing uh, the book style series. Pick them up if you ever get a chance to. They're great value. Um, have a great day. Peace out, everybody. Take care.